What switches genes on or off to instruct a bone marrow stem cell to become, say, a white blood cell is still very uncertain. But remarkable work being carried out here at the Texas Heart Institute could hold some of the answers. Dr. James Willison, who initiated the research, believes adult stem cells could be far more powerful than had previously been thought. We've become convinced that one can use bone marrow cells as a form of stem cell transplantation in a way that will improve blood flow to the heart and improve the function of the failing heart. Stem cells in Nelson's bone marrow are sucked out using a syringe and filtered to separate off other cells. They are then injected into the ailing heart between the living and dead tissue. The big question was whether this new environment could persuade the stem cells to change into new heart cells rather than the white blood cells they were originally destined to become. Dr. Emerson Perrin, a heart specialist at the Texas Heart Institute, began to build upon the pioneering work. He decided to conduct the trials in his native Brazil. Dr. Perrin has to map the diseased heart in three dimensions by putting a catheter into the organ via an artery in the leg. As this map builds up, it represents Nelson's heart before the stem cell injections. In a healthy person, this would all be purple. The red areas show where his heart has been savaged by heart attacks. Here you can see a purple spot. This area contracts normally. So you can tell immediately that this heart is very, very sick. If we lift this heart up and look at the bottom surface, these black dots are the actual sites in which we have injected the stem cells in the area most needing better blood supply, better blood flow, and, and where there was potential for recovery. The next part of the 45-minute procedure involved precisely injecting the stem cells into the heart using a tiny syringe fed up into the beating organ via the artery in the leg. The three-dimensional map is then used to guide the injections to a fraction of a millimeter, hitting the predetermined areas needing most help. Although these stem cells are from the patient's bone marrow, once placed in his heart, something amazing has happened. It turns out that uh, when you put one of these stem cells in the middle of a bunch of cells that are all heart cells, they sort of mimic uh, the environment. The cells are very smart in a way to turn into the kind of tissue that we need to turn them into. We think that from one standpoint, the stem cells are able to secrete many different very beneficial substances that may, for example, help grow blood vessels. They may also turn in to, let's say, a piece of blood vessel or turn into heart muscle. And that's another mechanism. So at this point, we're really not sure exactly uh, how that works, but we have a fair idea. They may not know how it works, but it seems it does work. The image on the right is a map of Nelson's heart just 16 weeks after his operation. So we've been looking at this map at the time of injection and you can see here at the site of where the cells were injected, we have a marked improvement, which is demonstrated by this large purple area, which represents now normally contracting muscle. And if we look at the other side of the heart, we see also a marked change in this large red area of weak heart muscle now turning into a near normal, stronger beating heart. So far, 14 patients have undergone the procedure, and all, like Nelson, have made remarkable progress. Every other day, I walk four kilometers, and I don't feel anything. I swim in the ocean, and I've now gone back to work. It's given me another life. I'm reborn. The trial is still in the experimental stage. It's unclear how the genes are turned on and off in the stem cells, but doctors are pushing ahead with new trials to verify their data. Patching up the heart seems like a fantastic way to regenerate the organ. But what if we could bypass this stage and build a new heart in its entirety? That's the ultimate aim of stem cell research, to replace organs altogether. 
but to do so moves the debate into an area of huge controversy. Adult stem cells may be much more versatile than was previously thought, but still their use is limited. To attempt to build a new organ from scratch requires the most versatile cells of all, embryonic 